Welcome to part 3 out of 5 short tutorial videos on how to get started with Percepti Labs. On the previous parts, you learned how to install and set up Percepti Labs, and got a good idea of the UI. I also quickly showed you how to get a model from the data wizard. But now, it's time to build a model from scratch. We'll be building a classification model which uses transfer learning. And, hopefully, by using Percepti Labs, you'll see just how easy that is. All right, let's get to it. First thing first, let's take a look at the dataset, which we'll be using to create this model. The dataset is for brain tumors, where we can classify people of not having or having brain tumors by looking at their MRI images from their brains. In here, we can see two different folders, one for no and one for yes, where no is the images of all the people who don't have the brain tumor while well, yes is from people who do have brain tumor. Even for us, it's pretty easy to see with these larger lumps, which one is which, so the model should hopefully not have too much of an issue doing this either. The last thing we can see in this dataset is this CSV file. And we talked about this before, but the CSV file is the standard format for Percepti Labs to load data into the tool. What it does is that it connects all the images to their different labels, so it's very easy for the tool to see what's what. Let's take a look at how that one looks like. As you can see here, all the images are lined up and all their corresponding labels are as well. All right, so now that we have the datasets sorted, let's jump into Percept Labs and start building out the model. So the first thing we want to do in Percept Labs is again to press this Create Model button and load our CSV file. We'll see the data wizard once again. And here we just select what's input and what's target. This one we can choose if we want binary or categorical. Then we just press next. We can leave the training settings for now. We'll change them just before we start the training. Then we press customize to get into the modeling workspace. Here we're going to build a VGG16 model using the pre-trained component. So we don't need any of these recommended models, recommended components, we can delete that one and start building out our own. I'll drag in the VGG component. If I hold Shift as well, it will automatically connect to the closest component. And we can see here a few different settings. For this one, we don't want to include top as we want to build that part out ourselves. We don't want it to be trainable meaning we don't want to update this model. We're going to use it only for feature extraction. And we're using already pre-trained weights, which means we have a good baseline already when we start. And the accuracy should look pretty decent, even from the first epoch. We then drag out two dense components, which will act as the trainable part of the model. The first one, we set neurons to 128. We change the activation function to reload, which is very common. And the second one, we change to two neurons, which is the same as the uh, number of targets, or categories in the target. And we set this to softmax, and this is very important. Uh, changing it to softmax makes sure that the sum of all the outputs equal 1 which makes it a lot easier to categorize them than if we were to use real, for example, where values can go from zero to infinity. Then we just connect this output component with the target component. And the model is ready. Last thing we need to do is just press run, change these settings. Since we have a fairly small uh, data set sample, we can choose a smaller batch size as well. And the loss function we want to make sure is cross entropy, 
as that is the go-to for categorical problems. Everything else is fine and standard. The next step is to run and train our model. We can do that easily by pressing this run button, but we'll do that in our next tutorial. Hey, I hope you had fun creating your very first model in Perceptor Labs. Now it's time to train and test that model. Watch part 4 how to learn to do that easily within Perceptor Labs. As usual, if you run into any trouble or have any suggestions, please visit our forum at forum.perceptlabs.com or reach out to me directly at our Slack channel.